Oh, hey, you made it back. If we haven't met before, my name is Tracy and this is my channel. In March of 2023, I will be attempting a solo through hike of the Pacific Crest Trail. While I'm doing this personal journey, I'm also going to use it as an opportunity to fundraise for the Soldier On Fund. The Soldier On Fund assists ill and injured Canadian Forces members, and they're able to do this through generous donations from other Canadians. With those donations, um, the Soldier On Fund is able to provide members with recreational uh, equipment, as well as uh, affording them the opportunities to participate in other group recreational activities um, in order to help them keep maintaining a active lifestyle after service. My goal is to raise $1 for every kilometer that I will be hiking on the Pacific Crest Trail. Uh, and if you are interested in seeing me reach that goal, I will have a link on my channel where you can go and check out the Soldier Run Fund and see all the other wonderful uh, things that they provide to veterans and where you can also donate. So I know in my last video, I said that this video was going to be my gear review. Um, well, that has changed only because I've decided to swap out uh, one or two pieces of my clothing and I'm still waiting for those to show up. And so I don't really want to jump into that video until I have everything. So um, you can see everything that I'm taking. So instead today, we will do the Q&A video. And I asked you to send me all your questions and I had a great response. Uh, so I have two pages really of um, questions. And some of the questions were duplicates, so I've just narrowed it down to the ones that are the main ones. Um, so yeah, let's get into the questions. So. Okay, so what part of the trail are you looking forward to? I am actually looking forward to every single part of the Pacific Crest Trail. I want to have all the experiences. I want everything that the Pacific Crest Trail can throw at me. I mean, that's why you go on adventures, right? Um, with that said, I mean, I have had experience in the desert before, so that is not going to be new to me. Um, but if I were to pick the one section that I am the most excited about seeing, that is definitely going to be the Sierra Nevada portion, possibly because where I live too in Canada, in Ontario, we don't have mountains like that. And I've never seen those before. So I really want to experience the Sierra Nevada portion. So hopefully I, I get that far and uh, I get to see those uh, firsthand. Are you having to quit a job in order to be able to do this for six or seven months? No, luckily I retired from the military quite a few years ago. Um, so I don't have to worry about quitting a job. Uh, for those of you who don't know, so a lot of people who do go and do a through hike, it's a huge commitment. And that means, um, you know, taking time off work and uh, people actually quit their jobs in order to be to do this because not every job is going to give you that time off. So it's a lot of dedication uh, for people to give up their careers, uh, their homes, people have sold their homes, they've sold their possessions, um, they've rented out their homes, you know, they've done everything to be able to go and make this journey. So luckily for me, no, I don't have to worry about quitting a job. Uh, the second part of that question is how am I going to finance this trek? Uh, again, luckily being retired, I get a pension. And I also have a spouse at home and he will be looking after the home and everything while I'm away. So I'm um, pretty lucky in that regard that I, I don't have to worry about that. Will any family or friends be joining you on the trail? No, um, you know, I have never actually hiked with anybody. Every time I go hiking, I am by myself. And I actually like it. I can humor myself. I can keep myself occupied. I call it my thinking time. Um, you know, hence my channel name, She Walks Through. It's how, again, I work through anything that's going on in my life. And I can be very contemplative and going within myself when I'm hiking. So I actually like being by myself when I'm hiking. It gives me that time to just think things through and work things through. So um, going out to do this trail, it is going to be very people-y, and I know this. Uh, so 
again though you know my whole purpose of wanting to do this journey is taking myself out of some comfort levels and you know i am a social person i should say that i am a social person uh but i like being by myself too so i guess i have the best of both worlds uh, but no, nobody is joining me other than at the end of this trek. Um, my spouse is possibly going to be driving from Ontario um, with our trailer and he's going to have his like, little mini vacation, you know, on his way out to meet me in Washington. Um, and then we will drive back to Ontario and we'll just make another little, you know, trip out of that. How old are you? Presently, I am 53 years old, uh, but I will have turned 54 four days before I start the trail. So I am definitely not going to be the youngest out there, and I most certainly will not be the oldest out there as well. What camera equipment and video editing equipment will you be using um, while you're vlogging? Well, uh, up until last week, I was going to be using a GoPro 10 with a gimbal and then I had all these accessories for it and then I realized you know I'm taking this GoPro and a gimbal to go with the GoPro and I'm also going to be carrying my phone so why am I taking all of this weight when I could just narrow it down to one thing and make my load even easier and not only that you know now i'm getting into having to recharge everything and now it's not going to become fun anymore it's going to become more of a chore to be vlogging so i've done away with all that and instead i'm going to be using a iphone 14 with a and i know i'm probably going to butcher this uh xeon 5s gimbal so it's a smartphone gimbal so that is what I will be using for my vlogging and I'm using it right now for filming and it seems to be doing okay. Uh, as for editing equipment, um, there are three, I think, different apps that come with the Zoom 5S gimbal. I haven't played around with all of them yet. I believe at least one of them is a uh, in-app purchase. You do get a seven day free trial with that, that I'm trying out, but not with this video at the moment. Um, so yeah, right now I'm going to still narrow down the editing equipment. I know that I'm not a techie person and I need something that's going to be very, very easy because I really don't want the vlogging to become a hassle and a chore and not make this adventure seem fun anymore. So still playing around with that. But when I figure out, um, what editing equipment I will be using, I will absolutely let you know. What camera equipment is the trail marked? Yes, the trail is marked. It has its official Pacific Crest Trail emblems. Um, also, there are signage on the trail. I'm also going to be using an app on my phone called Gut Hooks, and that has the whole PCT broken down into sections and everything about those sections, like, uh, you know, how much mileage are in between those sections and such. Um, so there's all kinds of informative ways to find your way along the trail. Uh, not only that, the trail has been actively hiked since at least the 70s, and it is very well worn. And so you're talking about thousands of people on the trail every year. Um, and you're going to see when I start vlogging, it's, it's pretty hard to miss the trail. You're going to really see it. How are the temperatures and... Is your sleeping bag warm enough? Um, so like I mentioned earlier, you are going to be experiencing, or I'm going to be experiencing six of the seven equal zones in the United States. And so you have a lot of uh, different temperature ranges in there. Uh, most people carry a sleeping bag of 20 degrees for minus six degrees. Uh, so that is a sleeping bag I'm going to be carrying as well. And when we get to the gear video, I'm going to talk a little bit about that because I'll show you what sleeping bag I'm taking as well. Um, but yeah, it's all about, you know, picking your layers that have dual purposes as well for keeping you warm. What do you expect to be the most challenging? Um, I believe there's going to be quite a few challenges on this adventure. And there's going to be some mental challenges and there's going to be some physical challenges. Absolutely. Uh, I think for myself, the biggest uh, physical challenge 
and mental challenge actually is going to be those water crossings in the Sierra Nevada only because I don't swim. I don't like being in water whatsoever. Uh, with that said though, I can doggy paddle better than any Labrador retriever when I've got fear uh, in the back of my mind. Uh, but you know, I also know my own strengths and weaknesses. So I'm not going to be putting myself in a position where I would have to possibly go through the water uh, by myself. If it should ever come to that, I will wait it out until other people show up. And you know, you, you go through the water as a group. Um, so yeah, there's not going to be something that, um, that I'm going to do recklessly. Absolutely not. If I had to pick a physical challenge as well, I think that it's going to possibly be uh, in the beginning, getting used to that resupply and you know, getting in the mode of resupply and knowing how much food that you're actually gonna need for the next leg of the journey instead of you know thinking that, oh, I might starve. I need to carry like these 20 boxes of Starbursts or something like that. Um, so, you know, yeah, that's gonna be uh, physically challenging as well. Do you need a passport to enter into Canada? Absolutely, you're gonna need your passport or your Nexus card to enter back into the country when you've finished your hike. With that said though, you have to remem remember that the Pacific Crest Trail is an American National Scenic Trail. It's not a Canadian trail. It ends at the border of Mexico and Manning Park, British Columbia. Uh, generally in the past, once you reach that monument, you can then walk you know, eight kilometers into um, the road in Manning Park and where you would be picked up or fly home or do whatever you had to do. Um, that's not the case anymore since 2020. That has been shut down, so you can no longer enter Canada from Monument 78. You will actually have to turn around and walk back to the nearest town uh, in order to get off the trail. And so that... Okay, I promise we're almost finished here. We're down to the last two questions. Uh, so the next question is, Will you be walking on ice? Uh, yes, absolutely, I'll be walking on ice. And I believe my first big ice patch is probably gonna be when I reach San Jacinto. Um, so I will be taking my micro spikes and I will be carrying them throughout the whole journey, uh, definitely up until after, or after the Sierras for sure. Um, they don't weigh a lot, so it's not like you're going to add any extra weight to my pack by having them on me. Uh, as well, when I get into Idlewald area, I'm probably going to be picking up an ice axe then. I still haven't decided on that. I mean, California has received a lot of snow this year. And up in those higher elevations, there are more snow. And, it, you know, as the sun is melting, it's that hard crust of snow and ice on top. And people are walking and it makes it slippery. So you may need an ice axe. I'm going to wait out and see um, what that is like as I get close to that area. What the conditions are like there. If I'm going to need an ice axe at that time. Uh, if not, then I'm definitely going to be having an ice axe as I go through the Sierra Nevada portion of the trail. So I will be picking up an ice axe in Kennedy Meadows South for that. This next question is probably the second most asked question um, that I have uh, received about doing this adventure. And that is, what about cougars, bears, and snakes? Are you not scared? And will you be taking bear spray? So again, it's mother nature. Um, it's not my environment, it's their environment, and it's not up for them to move out of my way. It's actually my responsibility to make them aware I am in the area. Uh, as far as I know, nobody has ever been attacked or mauled on the Pacific Crest Trail by a cougar. Uh, nobody has ever been attacked or killed by a black bear on the Pacific Crest Trail. Uh, snakes, I mean, I'm sure people have been bitten by snakes on the Pacific Crest Trail. Absolutely. Uh, cougars are going to be roaming from, you know, dusk to dawn. Uh, that's when they're out generally hunting for their 
um, next meal, which is also wandering around at that time. That's not to say that they're not going to be out in the daytime as well. Uh, I know that there are at least two very well-known areas in California where the most cougar sightings are, and so I'm aware of those locations and to be extra cautious in those locations. Uh, you know, it's all about being educated. Uh, we're not part of their food chain, and if anything, they're, they are shy. Um, I don't think that I'm going to get to see a cougar. I mean, and at the same time, I'll be honest, I actually would like to be able to see one, of course, within safe, safe distances and such. Um, but the chances of that happening are very, very slim. Um, you know, they are going to stay out of our way. And we, not only that, you're talking about groups of people moving through. We're loud. We're obnoxious. They don't want anything to do with us. So, yeah, having a healthy respect and a healthy awareness, absolutely. I mean, they are wild creatures. Um, definitely will be, you know, doing that and doing things that doesn't uh, put me in a position that a apex predator would think that I'm a, their next meal, of course. Uh, I do, however, plan on doing night hiking. And again, though, uh, when we talk about risk assessment and, you know, doing things without, you know, putting yourself at risk, um, I'll probably be night hiking with a lot of other people that are night hiking as well. Uh, a lot of people do that. So it's not uncommon. Uh, I think... My biggest concern is not the cougars or the bears. It's actually the snakes and not because I'm afraid of snakes. I actually like snakes. Uh, and we have snakes here in Ontario, you know, and I've been around them. That doesn't bother me, but we don't have rattlesnakes where at least I live in Ontario. I believe there are rattlesnakes down in Southern Ontario. Um, but where I'm too, no, we don't have those. Uh, so I think for me, it's going to be uh, you know, keeping in the back of my mind all the time. I just can't throw myself down on, onto the ground or step on rocks or step over rocks or step over, you know, trees and other obstacles. I, I actually have to make sure that, uh, you know, there's none of those uh, nope ropes, um, as they're called, you know, hiding and, and taking shade. So yeah, I'm going to have to really, really keep in the back of my mind about the snakes. But as for the cougars and the bears, no, I'm not concerned about those at all. And no, I'm not taking bear spray. Actually, in fact, um, a lot of parts along the trail, bear spray is actually not allowed. And from my experiences, being around people who are panicked and, you know, they have bear spray, they just start spraying that all over the place and they're lazing everyone and everybody's getting hit by it uh, except for the intended target. So no bear spray as well, I won't be taking. Uh, however, I will be taking a knife, yes. And that's gonna be for, you know, personal protection if I should ever need it. Although no one's ever been attacked by another person on the Pacific Crest Trail either. Uh, but also for food, for cutting up food mostly. Do you bring an extra pair of shoes? Uh, no, that's extra weight. You don't want to be doing that. Um, and there's actually more reasons than that. So I just found this out last year, but while you're on trail and you're hiking so much, your feet are actually going to grow and you're going to need bigger shoes. At the moment, I have a very, very narrow foot and I will be starting with the Salomon Ultra uh, Force. And it's a shoe that works for me and it's comfortable and it's lightweight. Uh, I know though that when those have been worn up, I'm going to need um, a different set of footwear. So yeah, as you move up the trail and as you get those, you know, miles under your belt, so to speak, um, in the next town, you're going to go and get another pair of shoes to be hiking. A lot of people will then move into like the ultra long peaks because they have a wider toe box. And so it allows your feet to spread out. So no, you don't take an extra pair of shoes with you for that reason, weight and your feet are gonna grow. Um, but you do, and, or a lot of people do take um, like a pair of camp shoes to have. So when they get to camp that night, they can take off their hikers with their feet, breathe, um, you know, and walk around, you know, their campsite and set up and such like that. 
and give your feet a break. Uh, also, they're used for when you're in towns and you're at these, say, um, communal shower areas where, you know, you don't pick up any sort of um, foot diseases. The last question is, what have you done to prepare yourself for this journey? Uh, well, I have um, been going to the gym religiously since October um, for a lot of lower body. I do train my legs three times a week and I do use heavy weights for that. Um, you know, I sh probably should do a bit more stretching than I do uh, as well. But yeah, uh, most of the injuries on trail have to do with, you know, knees and ankles and such, um, you know, because of the pressures that you're putting your legs on while you're walking. Uh, so I've been doing lots of compounded movements with legs um, and including heavy weights for those three times a week, definitely. Uh, that's my go-to. As well as, you know, I do upper body and uh, core, back, definitely. And cardio as well. Um, for mentally preparing myself for this challenge, um, I guess because of my past career of having, you know, you had to have all these plans and you had to have everything planned. It's very hard to move away from that um, and, uh, you know, realize like everybody has told me, don't plan anything. Just don't do it. You'll be disappointed. Um, you just need to go with it as it's happening. So that is going to be a little bit, I guess, uh, unusual for me to do, but mentally I'm prepared to go, you know, something doesn't work out. You just move on and you work around it just not to make any plans, I guess, is the plan, if that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, that is, I think, mostly my preparing. And of course, like, again, educating myself on, you know, the weather conditions there and the wildlife there and, um, you know, keeping myself informed and, uh, you know, that will help me make better decisions as well while I'm on trail. So that is it. We have come to the end of the Q&A and uh, for everyone who sent in questions, thank you so much uh, for showing interest and asking me such great questions and I had fun answering those. Uh, sometimes I forget that you know, a lot of my friends and family don't have any idea about the Pacific Crest Trail. And I do have viewers on my channel that are very, very, very familiar with the Pacific Crest Trail. And they religiously follow through hikers every single year. So I apologize to you. Some of this is probably a little bit redundant. Um, but yeah, so for family and friends and anybody else, if you would like to have know more about this journey or have some more questions for me that maybe I haven't covered or haven't been asked, uh, please feel free to ask me those down below, drop them. And if I have enough questions, I can always do another q and I mean, I have five weeks left now, so there's time. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I got something in my throat. Um, with that said, Next video is definitely going to be my gear video and I'm excited about showing you everything that I'm going to be taking on trail with me and explaining why I made those decisions to take such items as well. Uh, so follow me for that. So don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you on the next video. See ya.